Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of the TNT podcast. Uh we are of course doing the World Test Championship final review today and it's a uh, day 2. Um and I uh, today I have me Yash and uh, Arjun uh and uh, we hope that uh, you can join us on this uh day to day uh review of uh what can be said as the ultimate test. And um straight off the bat I want to talk about the uh team selection yeah i think we can start, start off with that so um obviously india uh played their cards quite early and then uh we saw how new zealand uh came in with uh, five seamers which to me personally was a surprise uh i don't know what do you guys feel i think it was kind of expected wasn't it from new zealand after like the weather like i think new zealand they went to have a look like their team selection was weather determined i i feel like if yeah. if the weather had not played that much of a part i'm pretty sure they would have gone with one specialist spinner at least true but i mean do you think they I mean, uh we saw how england uh, or rather we talked about england last episode and we saw how their lack of a proper spinner like I mean, they relied on joe root and their lack of a proper specialist spinner uh actually was quite detrimental to mm. their uh how, I mean, how they played so yeah. Do you, do you think the New Zealand might have missed a trick by not playing Ajaz Patel? Uh, I mean, right now, yes, it's overcast conditions. I mean, and it, is, it does seem to uh, likely seem that way, yeah. uh, which will favor fast bowlers. But for me personally, I feel any uh, attack, no matter what the conditions are, I, I, I do believe that you should have at least one specialist spinner. I mean, I think I mean, India over, sort of overcompensated yeah. for the fact uh, by having both. I, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, okay, you can't like it, it's quite harsh to drop either Ashwin or Jadeja. That's a different story. Yeah, I think with Ashwin yeah. and Jadeja being both included, it was more about them being both just premium match winners. That you, you just doesn't make sense dropping either one of them. I mean, Jadeja, he's in that kind of form where he can get in just as a batsman. He's been averaging fifty for the last two to three years. So I mean, that kind of uh, consistency lower down the order, it's very hard to find. And I think that's exactly, why we yeah. threw the Jadeja. With the five seeming options, uh, at first, yeah, I was like, hmm, yeah, you're going to lack a bit of variety in the attack, you know. Maybe the batsman will find it easier to get settled because they're facing the same kind of speeds and lines and lengths. But when I start, when I was watching yesterday, they brought up a lot of interesting statistics about uh, bowler, uh, like batsmen like Pujara and Rahane and how they play spin really, really well. So maybe their choice of Five seamers wasn't just uh, because of the weather, but also factoring in matchups because in a in a one-off game matchups are very very important. Like, uh, and it, okay. so maybe their reasoning was if we take away the option of spin, in uh, in those early five to ten overs that a, a new batsman comes into bat, he's going to be way more challenged, especially in overcast conditions. And we saw that kind of because Pujara got out early. Way earlier than a lot of us expected. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, uh, Pujara played his typical knock, I guess. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, what I think is New Zealand will start struggling in maybe day three or day four mm. when mm, the definitely. pitch gets more, you know, potholes and stuff, yeah. and then the pitch will actually start spinning. Yeah. So in a way, we have the advantage that we are batting first now, and they have to bat last. Um, yeah. But uh, do you do you think we? I mean, I know it. It's I mean, as we spoke, we, it is quite harsh to drop either Ashwin or Jadeja. But do you think that we perhaps, given the conditions, we would have been better off with uh, four seamers and one spinner? No, I still feel that's our best lineup. Whatever they no, filled it. I, yeah, yeah. I I definitely think that we have enough quality with those three seamers. And this is the and first time all five of them have actually played together. You know, in this World Test yeah. Championship, oh, really? the yeah, first yeah. time ever. Okay, I mean, I mean, arguably that's our best level, so yeah. uh, not surprised. I mean, I mean okay, or rather, I am surprised that it is it is the first time to play together. But uh, yeah, it is why I, I guess like injuries and uh, various other reasons mm. have been sort of hampering uh, that level to be playing together for a period of time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, nevertheless, I think it was. Uh, let me let, let's get into the test match proper. And uh, mm-hmm. we, we can take it session by session. So, first session, uh, thoughts? So Coach losing the toss once start. again. Yeah. 
unfortunate. <laughs> but, I mean, I mean, yeah. On, on pers- I mean, personally, I was quite excited to see us batting. I mean, yes, we are going to be put under the back foot. I mean, straight off the bat, we are we lost a toss, uh, overcast conditions, uh, perfect conditions for New Zealand bowling, especially mm-hmm. giving five, given five seamers. Um, I was excited to see how our stroke players would get along, and uh, uh, I thought personally they coped quite well yeah. initially. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean the first hour we played really, really well. well. Both Rohit and yeah. Shipman they took the yes like the fast bowling. They adjusted really well and they played the ball really late, uh, not really making any mistakes. Yes. You know, uh, so it was very odd when Rohit got out because Rohit was actually playing very well, and then that one shot he just decided to sort of premeditate yeah. his shot. And that led yeah, to the edge yeah. and the catch. Yeah, yeah. He was, I, he was, I think New Zealand were, were missing their lens initially. Yeah, as well. they. Uh, like, it was a bit of a combination of both. I feel like the New Zealand bowlers they weren't really nailing that length, and basically yeah. we were punishing that one bad ball per over for boundaries. Like we scored, a, we scored like eight boundaries in the first session. Rohit Sharma had like five. Yep. So yeah, we were. Yeah. I think we played. Like from an Indian standpoint, we played the perfect uh, game uh, in the sense that it could have easily yeah. been a case of the twenty nineteen World Cup semi final, uh, where we had exactly, where we were like yeah. three down. So even though after that we had we kind of had a mini collapse because we lost uh, Gill and Rohit in quick succession, and then we had two new batsmen out. But at least we managed to go through that first session relatively in a. I mean, I would say it was sort of quite an even first session because New Zealand came back pretty yeah. well as well, getting the two wickets yes, yes. of Rohit and Shubman. Yeah. So, uh, I actually had, yes, in yes, a way, yes. you could yeah. say it was shed, shed, like shed session. However, I, yeah. I would say actually, I would say, I would say with the two wickets, yeah, uh, yeah yes, probably they had a would have taken the yeah, session. advantage. Yeah. Better session, yeah. I mean, uh, personally, I thought, okay, I mean, uh, taking a step uh, slightly back, I thought Gil particularly uh, coped very well with the short ball. Yes, uh, yes. He played a few uh, splendid pools, especially. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I thought he looked very assured. I mean, for a... I mean, the guy is, what, a year younger than us? Uh, or for Yash, yeah, in the Yash's years, case, only yeah. two. But, yeah, a couple of years. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, to be... I mean, it, it's a big occasion. And the guy only got on to the squad since the Australia tour. Yeah. So, he hasn't had an awful lot of experience. And that's his first outing in England, mind you. Um I thought he I, there were a, there were some some signs of nerves initially. I think that's yeah. uh, I mean it's expected, uh, love, definitely. Exactly, but I thought both batsmen like uh, I think Vinesh Karthik was talking in the commentary. Uh, both both, both uh, batsmen actually practice something called positive leaving. So meaning, um, I mean like someone like Pujara is go- not going to look to score on, so he is not really looking to be positive. Whereas both these batsmen are looking to yeah yeah constantly score runs. Yeah. So they always on the f- they always uh. The initial trigger movement, if you like to call it, they're always on the front foot, yeah. and they're looking to play late. Uh, and uh, yeah, many people mistake playing late for being on the back foot. But uh, what uh, the experts recommend you to do in the, in such a condition is to actually uh, play your normal conventional strokes, but uh, play this time the ball a bit later mm-hmm. because uh, of course you you do see the variable bounce uh, in English pitches, yeah. and I thought both. Uh, Gil and Rohit actually played uh, that uh, brilliant yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Initial, uh, Definitely. especially the initial phase. I would say Gil yeah, really impressed me. For his first time in England, uh, yep. he was active at the crease. Like he he relied on his footwork a bit more than usual. Like he, he would walk down the pitch sometimes to a few deliveries, trying to negate the swing, trying to get the bowlers to change their length. Yeah, he got a blow so, in his face as well through Kyle Jamieson. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, I think he he made a mistake with Kylie Jamieson because he's a seven footer. He's going to get some extra bounce. So walking down the wicket isn't the best decision. And yeah, he made the adjustment. He went back to a back and across trigger movement after that. So it shows that he's a thinking cricketer. Like he at an age at such a young age, he's thinking about how to get bet- the better of these bowlers at every time, which is what you need to do at at, at this level. So yeah, I yeah, I, I I think they had a specific plan, especially. Uh, so, I I think they stuck to it. Like I think probably Gil and uh, probably Rohit would have talked with their backroom staff mm-hmm. on how they're going to exactly approach uh, New Zealand's bowling attack. I think Gil had a plan to negate the or rather uh, combat the swing which uh, the New Zealand fast bowlers possessed by uh, stepping out of the crease. Yeah. 
uh whereas rohit i think he was uh, i think he probably had that a uh, positive uh, mindset from the get go so he was looking to play uh, at every ball unless it's not in his slot then he just left it alone yeah which uh, i mean he did that well for the majority of the i mean i just want to say that people but, uh, uh, give a lot of criticisms against rohit for his well batting in test especially but i feel he's been pretty decent yeah. for us honestly in test it's just uh, he's not gotten a big score but he gets off like gets us off to a good start and as we know in yeah. test cricket the start is the momentum of the game so yes. um i mean obviously yeah. it's a shame that he couldn't convert or even gail as well he couldn't they both couldn't convert their good starts to maybe big scores but uh ultimately what they both did is they set a good foundation for the indian team for like kohli pujara after they come in to just play their own game and not take too much risk in terms of scoring runs as you could see the second session we only scored 51 runs in like 27 overs i think yeah yeah it's a struggle in that second I mean, session I I guess it's also has to do with the fact that Pujara was batting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh I mean, that's always a uh, but uh yeah I think that's a perfect uh, segue to the second session. Yeah. So um, second session I think I would say I would say slightly more even in that sense. I mean yes we won't score it yeah, too much but, but we uh, one wicket one wicket loss is still a I would say a big dub for us personally because yeah. uh, <laughs> I mean in those conditions it's pretty I mean, impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I mean to even get sixty-two runs. You know, sixty-two runs is a opening partnership, right? If about Rose. yes, about there. Yeah, yeah. So even getting sixty-two runs in those conditions were was a big, big yeah. bonus. And I and I did see we can stumbling uh, as fast as they did in the second, I mean first session. Uh, but uh, second session, I thought they coped pretty well. Uh, personally, uh, yeah, Pujara, but was a bit disappointing. Yeah. I must say, yeah. like, uh, I mean, yes, we we do understand his way of combating. Uh, or other playing test cricket in general which is quite slow i mean if for the younger audience is probably more of a, I, I, i mean it's not as uh, entertaining if you like to call it yeah but uh, yeah I, i don't know personally I, i mean obviously you want him to stay um, as long as he can even if it's 20 of 200 balls like we talked <laughs> about in the previous episode <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah i think yeah, yeah i guess yeah i got yeah, yeah. Uh, Jude, yeah. yeah so I feel like his way of batting isn't suited for English conditions. In in Australia it worked pretty well because the ball the Kukavara ball deteriorates faster compared to the Duke's ball. Uh-huh. So it is even if he does play the long game in England right it all it takes is just one good ball for him to get out. So I would rather see him yeah. play a bit more positively because the Duke's ball is going to keep swinging until maybe Yeah, it swings in fact 60. even more as the ball gets a bit worse sometimes. Yeah. Yeah yeah exactly. Yeah. So it yeah so for me I think Pujara needs to maybe just let loose a bit m- more and play more on the front foot and be more positive. See my only Because, issue with Pujara uh-huh. is that um like I totally don't mind the way he plays. Like he takes a lot of time. He basically uh takes the bowlers fit like fitness out of it as well. He fatigues the bowlers and stuff. But the problem with Pujara is or rather like in the whole idea of the way Pujara plays for me is let's say if we have a batting collapse Uh let's say we are playing so well we have a batting collapse uh then you're going to come back and look at Pujara because oh he only scored 8 runs taking 100 like 50 odd balls and it sort of hampered us you know whereas if he in those 50 balls he could have added, given us another 10 20 more runs we would have been in a slightly better position you get what I'm trying to say true that's that's yeah. my only issue with Pujara uh, I do get yeah. it there's definitely yeah is it I think that's that's always been a issue with Pujara I guess like I mean you always wanted to score faster than Yeah. He does, but I mean you have to accept him as he is because uh then again you'll also you so you'll so have him at the other end uh on the other side of these stroke players like uh Pant to Gill yeah. and uh Yeah, Lewis, yeah, definitely. Who I mean his innings wasn't that like wrong either yesterday. He played pretty well. I uh, he took a lot of balls and stuff. It's just he didn't score that many runs, which maybe he should have. And like Arjun yeah, mentioned, I mean, yeah, I, like it takes just one good ball, that good in swinger by Bolt to get him out. Yeah, as it, it's always a problem with uh, someone playing Pujara's game, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but okay, but I also want to talk about New Zealand's fast bowling. What do you guys think? Like, I know initially they missed their lengths. Yeah. Uh, I, especially, and uh, I mean, they just got two wickets after that. Uh, what do you guys feel? Did they? Uh, I think did they correct themselves better, or did they show a better yeah. account of themselves? I think uh, account of themselves honestly, better in the second and third session. Yeah, Jamieson was was on point. 
he was bowling that length that full length and that's how he uh-huh. got rohit sharma out that he got it full fully and then got rohit to hang his bat in there for that extra second and that induced the outside edge and yeah he was yep. he was keeping it economical as well i think his his figures are 1 for 14 in 14 overs so it shows that even though he wasn't getting like running through us he was still keeping us like quiet and building up pressure and yeah for most of the second session i was very nervous because realistically with kohli and rahane at the crease you know that has to be the partnership that brings us to a competitive total as long i mean as F&D, much as yeah. pan jadeja ashwin to come you, you you need your top order to stand up especially when we have a long tail like india does because after ashwin what we it's all the main line bowlers already like yeah so true true yeah so yeah i mean yeah were you surprised with the way uh, trent bolt and uh, saudi like i mean they weren't hitting their legs yeah. uh, on the get go I, i mean personally i thought i was quite surprised because i mean we talked about it we we thought that they are supposed to be the more match up among the yeah. two teams but we saw that the i mean they weren't hitting their i think their the prime lens uh, exactly i think it's the conditions also you know the, because maybe yeah. uh, as a bowler sometimes you don't know what the pitch is going to do so you try to gauge maybe where's the perfect like way to pitch it and stuff and then uh it doesn't turn out to be like the pitch doesn't turn out to be the way they expected it to be so i think you feel maybe that's why they initially missed their lens but, and stuff uh, but like, actually saudi got pretty well but, like even both got a wicket yeah. pujara afterwards so as the session progressed yeah. they actually became better But I feel ultimately South- New Zealand will be more disappointed than happy because the reason why they chose to bowl first is to get through this entire batting lineup as soon as possible. Exactly. With the yeah. conditions yeah. and well they pretty much felt that because we have two pretty set, set batsmen now in the crease and uh, we've got decent amount of runs as well because on this pitch I feel anything above 250 would be a good uh, score for us. Yep. I had that same number in my head as yeah. well actually. Uh I feel I think if I think if in these conditions if we get 250 uh we have a game on our hands honestly because yeah. Betting I think uh in, even in the first innings for New Zealand they are going to struggle uh, a bit. Face a lot of challenges as especially with uh if conditions I mean I do see conditions uh, persisting. Hmm. Uh I do see the same overcast conditions for the uh next four days. Yeah. If you, I mean I mean we are likely to have a day 6 but uh, yeah. yeah I mean ho- let's see. But I mean, to be honest, I do see our bowlers. Uh, uh, I mean, the conditions are perfect for our bowlers to thrive, if you like to put it. You know. Yes, yes, definitely. So, so I think anything two, I think two fifty. I think it's very, very important today, especially the way uh, Kohli and uh, Rahane yes. get along. Um, I, I feel like a big partnership, especially from both of them, because you can't expect much. I know Ashwin has scored a century recently in England. I mean, sorry, England against England, but. Uh, you still need your batsman your pure batsman to actually uh, step up and uh, i think put yeah. together a big partnership here's a stat for uh, you and right rahane i think yeah. every time rahane has scored as entry we've never lost so i'm hoping <laughs> i i am i think century is a bit too much yeah. to ask for him right I now, think, given the conditions okay, but i think kohli can actually do it uh. I, i'm like i i, I hope so I really yeah hope so. i think kohli were, kohli looked very assured yesterday right yeah. uh, I I thought that as well. I, I he he didn't really did he give any chances? I mean okay, um, the second the third session especially was a bit weird one because uh he kept on trying to drive. I I didn't understand why. And yeah, he was he missing was the drive. The, yeah. He was pushing okay. he was so what he did really well in the first few sessions was that um and this was an analysis done by Sunny Boy. Uh, <laughs> he was he, okay. he talked about how he, he made sure that his eye line was directly like looking at the ball when he was driving and uh-huh. and what he did was he he made sure that he played close to his body and in the third session i think maybe with the intermittent delays because of the bad light maybe his concentration was a bit off and he 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 w- did look quite frustrated because they <laughs> they called off the game like for the third time in like an hour within an hour because of bad light and so maybe he was he was trying to look for that really short you know that cover drive to Yeah, to make him that. feel yep. confident again, and yeah, so he was pushing at the ball a bit more in the third session. But overall, I mean, a masterful performance as usual. Yep, definitely. I mean, uh, I mean, okay. I mean, given how we've discussed, I mean, not not particularly third session, but we've discussed more. He's only scored one boundary, by the way. I just saw. Yeah. Is yeah. that one cover drive which he did early on, which got him off the mark or something? 
Yeah. And then apart yeah, from yeah, that, he's not scored a bomb. It was a beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it, that was a beautiful shot. Uh, to be fair, it was a it was a classic Kohli cover. One of the best sights in cricket. Uh. Yeah. And, yep. You know, it always uh, the but, yeah, one issue I, mean, I have, right? It it always like whenever he goes for a cover drive, my heart drops for a moment because I know sooner or later he's going to edge one to the slips because he's done that a lot of yeah, times. Yeah, I mean that's always a risk. Yeah, I yeah, mean, especially in England, I think he struggled with Anderson. He used to have this problem in twenty fourteen, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that fourth stump line, I think he always had that uh, issue with his batting. But I think uh, over the years he's uh, improved that, himself. Yeah. I mean, he's worked on himself. Uh, I think he has. Uh, Sort of negated that, uh, I guess, weakness in his game. Yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah, I just want to just talk about the day as a whole. I think we are coming to the uh, end of this episode. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, what do you guys feel like uh, India? I mean, do you think it's a even day, or do you think would you say India have a slight edge given the fact that they w- they've only lost three wickets? Yeah, I I would say that I would give India the mental edge, not not within the game itself, but mentally, right? They would be in a way better position than I thought they would be. Because after the first session, True. I was fearing the same thing that Vikas was, that they would get us <laughs> out cheaply, and then it would be another yeah. lower order rescuing act that we've seen quite a lot <laughs> recently. But yeah, I think Kohli and Rahane they stepped up uh, as the captain and vice captain, and as you said, they even though the ball was swinging, they were looking to play positively. I mean, in these overcast conditions, there's always going to be that ball right that just beats the edge of your bat, uh, but. It's up to you to be mentally strong, to trust in your technique, and keep going. And that's what they did. Yep. And so yeah. Yeah, yeah I I agree. I mean that's why I mean I even in Australia I felt like someone like Pujara. I mean I I keep saying Pujara is important, but I personally feel as a batsman if you're if you're looking to score, especially in Test cricket, because um if it only really takes one good ball to get you out, so exactly. uh why not why not make the most of uh. The balls you have, you I know. Mean, I mean, that's my mentality. Yeah. If I was a batsman approaching uh, yeah. the quicks of New Zealand, but uh, I mean, everyone has their own technique, I guess, to combat. Uh, I think I think Pujara's mindset is very of, suited for the Australian conditions, which is why uh, yeah, which is why we didn't see the downside of his style that much in that Australian series, and which is why he was actually a big reason why we won that series. But yeah, in English conditions, I think you have to be positive. You have to. You have to be willing to take chances because if you don't, the bowler is eventually going to hit that length where he, where it's just an unplayable unplayable ball. I think there was an over yesterday where Saudi, he bowled an over right. Uh-huh. Literally four or five of those balls went straight past Kohli's batter. Yeah, and Kohli was the most comfortable out there, and he could do nothing about yeah. it. Yeah, I mean overall, so, I would say like yeah. India did have a much better day, uh, probably than expected. Even they themselves probably thought that. That's a very good day for them because we are, I think, yeah. one forty six for three at stumps. So that's a pretty yeah. good score. And like we said, probably anything above two fifty would be a good total. Uh, I'm hoping with the amount of wickets and batting we have, we can maybe reach three hundred at least three hundred. I think. Let's see. I think. Yeah, I think anything. Three hundred is a three hundred is a bit of a stretch. I I feel personally because I feel once uh, New Zealand get past our pure batsmen, like yeah, once yeah. Rishabh pa- after Rishabh Pant. I mean, yes, I know Jadeja is averaging over 50, but it's a bit... Uh, no, but that's why I feel that this war, partnership is this going to be the important partnership now. And I think this partnership, if they can bring us above 200, I don't see why not the rest of our batting can get us at least 100 runs or so. Actually, actually yeah, I kind of agree, Yasha. I mean, it's a bit optimistic, given how how, <laughs> how quickly things can change in Test cricket. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. I still give us a... Like a chance to get to that three hundred mark because I mean two fifty is the minimum we should reach at least for sure from yeah, going think, on now. Yeah, if we fail to reach sure, that, then I, that's a I disappointment. Think, yeah. yeah, I just hope that the bets like Kohli and Rahane like day three they come in focused and yeah they they yeah I, I I personally this partnership will determine the match I I feel personally mm. so how long if let's say tomorrow or today rather they get out immediately touch with uh, I think. If we could see ourselves paddling under two hundred, that's yeah. that's the worst case scenario. That's the reality yeah. Uh, of yeah. <laughs> yeah, because honestly, given the conditions, I think our top order has coped very very well. But it just takes a couple of wickets to just undo the good yeah. work that has been done. So Especially far. if Kohli so, gets out early, then there's that mental like there's a there's a bit yep. of that mental. Yes, we are already starting on the back foot if Kohli gets out. Yeah. so that's a problem. So uh, yeah, I think this partnership holds key, and uh, I think we've just met, one thing to uh, add, guys. We've, we are scheduled yeah, sure. for rain at 9 to 10 a.m. in Southampton today. Oh, God. Okay. 
Yeah. Oh god. So we might not so we might not have a first session maybe. Let's see. Wow. Uh yeah, you never know. Let's yeah. see. Two years for this. Uh, <laughs> two years for this swimming competition. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, I mean to be honest, I think the conditions will uh I think make it a more even contest honestly because with overcast conditions you do have the uh conditions favoring Bro, the bowlers. It's pretty much New Zealand batsmen. conditions. Uh. Yes. Yeah, yeah it, does. it is it is but I'm, I'm just saying that it's sort of going to be a fair run like a first inning yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, match or, like it just you know it sort of kills the interest in test yeah. cricket. Yeah. So I just hope the so weather yeah, doesn't yeah, play is, a, is, like doesn't stay for too long uh because we do want to see some yeah, cricket yeah. and ultimately yeah, I feel exactly, even though like yeah. even if the weather is persistent throughout the next few days the thing is that it still keeps both the teams in game. because uh as you know the weather can quickly get some wickets so i feel we still might have an outside chance of a result and not a draw hopefully i hope so i think for final true, true. it's it's like it's a bit weird i know a draw is a fair outcome for a test match but it just feels wrong for a final I, for a team to be, share the maze together yeah it just yeah. sounds right. oh, so so i just is i just a super over is it again <laughs> <laughs> no la like, boundary counter oh boundary <laughs> new zealand fans will be having ptsd oh, oh. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yep. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think with that, I think we can conclude today's episode. I think uh, it has been a pretty. Uh, I guess I would I, w- I would give India the day uh, personally. Yeah. It's a very uh, interesting day, in fact, between bat and ball. Very interesting. That's, but day. I, I think I, it's. I'll still say like it's still a very even contest. Huh? Like there's still. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, perfect. I, as I as we always say, uh, it just takes one wicket for the whole match to change in terms of its yeah. complexion. So. Uh yeah, let's see. I think I think it's a bit, it's been an enthralling contest so far. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if uh, you're listening to us, uh, thank you so much for the support. Uh, do follow us on both Spotify and YouTube. The links in our is in our Instagram bio. Uh, at the next team SG. And uh, yeah, so do follow us for the day to day analysis for the uh, World Test Championship final. And uh, yeah, I think that's it from us from uh, at TNT. Uh, thanks guys. See you guys. Bye bye. Bye.